Hello, everybody. I'm Ed Pavlik in Lexington, Kentucky, and my colleague here. Uh, Frank Lawton, as usual, in London, UK. Well, on the 270th day of the year, we're going to go forward with another uh, Guy Not Garage. But first, Frank, uh, it looks like you guys have poked the bear by not inviting Elon Musk to the October Investment Summit in the UK. Is oh, your have we? Out in jeopardy? Are you going to lose your X account? Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do? Uh, yeah, I, we'll survive. I think there's a lot. Of, there's there's lots of other gossip eds. You know, so I, I think it's um, I, we'll, I think we'll survive that one. It, it'll be all right. I think there are other things that are a bit more important in the world at the moment than inviting someone to, you know, some bun fest uh, in whatever it is to talk about business. I, I think the Middle East, Ukraine, global warming, uh, uh, Sudan, which I read today that Khartoum is now going to be uh, bombarded by uh, one one side or the other in, and I, whatever, I don't understand half of it, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, anyway, well, today we're okay. going to consider a question, and that's that is there a difference in survival for women with early stage cervical cancer uh, between uh, an approach that's uh, called a minimally invasive radical hysterectomy or open surgery. Yeah. Uh, answers to this question are approached in a paper with, uh, from the United States. Uh, the title of th that was uh, lap, uh, LACC trial, final analysis on overall survival, comparing open versus minimally invasive for early stage cervical. The, pap uh, the page paper was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology as a clinical trial update. Uh, it had four and a half years of update. Now, uh, I'm going to do something different today. We're going to first have a um, human review, and then we're going to explore reviews in artificial intelligence. Frank, go ahead and give us your insight on this paper. Which one am I, the human or the artificial? <laughs> I believe you're the human. Okay. I, I want to just go back to the original publication in 2018 in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, same authors and describing the study that they wanted to carry out. They wanted a randomized controlled trial of the non-inferiority of uh, minimally invasive surgery versus open laparotomy for early stage, which is 1A1, 1A2, 1B1 cervical carcinoma. The outcome being overall survival, but more importantly, disease-free survival at four and a half years. They did some, it was a big uh, number of people involved. And one of the arguments was that perhaps some of the surgeons who were doing the minimal access surgery didn't have the expertise or the experience uh, that should have done. However, I think the authors were very uh, insistent on the quality of the surgery. They insisted on uh, video reports completely unedited from the ten uh, potential participants as to how they were uh, carrying out their surgery um, and uh, a minimum of 10, 10 laparoscopies. Now, I, think, I don't think... 10 laparoscopies is, is shows a, uh, an inferiority in any way of, of surgical experience. Anyway, so they got 300 and odd patients in each arm, randomized control study. Um, the criteria for each of the arms about histology and lymphascular space uh, invasion, tumor size, nodal, nodal invasion were very, very similar. The DC survival for the minimal access group at the time of reporting was 86% versus 96.5% for the open group. And the overall survival, which was at three years, was 90, nearly 94% for the minimal group and nearly, well, 99% for the open group. The trial, therefore, was closed early because of these data. They felt that there was a an adverse prognostic factor for patients with early stage cervical cancer being operated on by uh, with minimal access surgery. The arguments at the time were that the quality of the surgery was wasn't uh, the quality of the laparoscopic surgery was not good enough. I think that's wrong because the uh, nodal um, capture 
uh, for both groups was around 20. So they got as many nodes in the minimal access group as they did in the open group. Uh, and as I said, they, they showed they, from their uh, video recordings that they, they were capable of doing, of doing the, the study. So the other argument was that the although the idea was it was going to be a four and a half year follow up, this was actually the median follow up was only two and a half years. And I think criticism of this uh, or critic critics of this paper said you've not been following up with them. So the paper that we're actually discussing today, which is in the JCO, is the four and a half year median follow up in answer to this question that you didn't ask, you didn't follow them long enough. So the disease C survival is 85% for the minimal access group versus 96% for the open group. And the overall survival, 90.6% for the minimal access group and 96.2% for the uh, open group. So not a lot of difference between the data that was presented at a medium of three and a bit years versus the median that they wanted to, which is four years or so. They report the risk of death is 2.5 times higher in the medical in the minimal access group. And more importantly, the carcinomatosis. And it's you don't see carcinomatosis very often in cervical cancer. The carcinomatosis that recurrent when disease re re recurrence occurred, 23% in the uh, open group and 9% in the minimal access group. Now Sorry, the other way around. Sorry, the other way around. Now, this seems to me that there's something about the technique of laparoscopic surgery that increases the risk of uh, spread to peritoneal disease. And whether or not this is due to uterine manipulation or the three, four, five hours of intra abdominal increased pressure due to the laparoscopic surgery, I don't know. But... I think these data are important and I think patients should be should be aware of the possibility that if they are uh, offered and agreed to undergo minimal access surgery cervical carcinoma, they may be affecting their survival. Um, in at the, the end result, the conclusions uh, that the final study has is that minimal access surgery in uh, early cervical cancer should be confined to clinical trials. And I think that's a very, very important point. And I think if clinicians, wherever they are in the world, are doing these operations without telling patients these data, then I think the lawyers are going to have an absolute field day saying the data are there. This is the only randomized clinical trial looking at exactly what you are purporting to, to say. And the patients who are uh, undergoing laparoscopic surgery are doing less well, full stop. No, absolutely, Frank. Uh, I remember when this was first presented at the SGO and it was either in uh, uh, Atlanta or New Orleans, and, or it might've been in, in Hawaii, but I, I just remember the absolute shock uh, when both the prospective as well as the retrospective arguments were presented in two different studies. And uh, there were just a lot of people who couldn't believe this was true because after all, they were using this advanced technique that uh, everybody was training on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, with that in mind, uh, thank you for your human import. Uh, let, let's do a little bit of uh, hearing from the artificial intelligence and uh, just listen now, everybody. Critical analysis of the research paper, strengths. This is a clinical trial, which is a strong design for evaluating the effectiveness of different treatments. The study followed patients for a relatively long period of time, 4.5 years. Weaknesses. The study did not find enough patients to definitively determine whether minimally invasive surgery is non-inferior to open surgery. It is possible that other factors, such as the surgeon's experience with minimally invasive surgery, could have influenced the results. Conclusions. The study suggests that minimally invasive surgery may be less effective than open surgery for early stage cervical cancer. However, more research is needed to confirm these findings. Additional considerations. The decision of whether to have open or minimally invasive surgery should be made on an individual basis, taking into account the patient's preferences and other factors. Patients should discuss the risks and benefits of both types of surgery with their doctor. Overall, the study provides some evidence that minimally invasive surgery may be less effective than open surgery for early stage cervical cancer. 
However, the study has some limitations, and more research is needed before definitive conclusions can be drawn. It is important to note that this is just a brief critical analysis of the research paper. A more comprehensive analysis would include a more detailed review of the methodology, results, and discussion sections of the paper. Well, let me just add before turning it back to you, Frank, that this was uh, a query made to uh, Gemini, and the query was, was uh, critically an analyze uh, uh, this paper, and the, the way that was pointed to Gemini was through the DOI number. Go ahead, Frank, tell me what you think. Well, I think the paper actually answers as well as it can a lot of those uh, criticisms. They're very honest about it. You know, of course, we don't know the answer. It is an RCT. It's the first one that's been done. I think the idea of patients should discuss this with their clinicians is completely wrong. It's the other way around. Clinicians should be aware of these data. These data are important. And if they don't know it, I mean, you, you cannot say in your defense as a clinician, I didn't know the data, or I did know the data, but I didn't believe it, or I did know the data, I did believe it, but I didn't think it was to do with my patients. And all of those medically legally are completely unacceptable. Uh, the, the you know the, the these journals it's 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 not like there's some obscure journal from a, from a small country in the middle of nowhere. These are important data, which is why the basically the New England Journal of Medicine and the JCO have published it. And I agree there should be more studies. Of course there should, but the only way you're going to be able to do more studies is to do a randomized study, and you've got to be able to say to patients. We are randomizing you to a potential thing based on, on these data that may mean that your survival is compromised by this. And I, it's going to be a difficult study to run, but you can't do it any other way. These data, I don't think you can argue with these data. Exactly. And going forward, the study would have to do with making a minimally invasive approaches better. Uh, right now, this, this, this inferiority is being shown. And it's interesting, uh, the statement given by Gemini was the study did not find enough patients to definitively determine whether minimally invasive surgery is non inferior to open surgery. Yeah. And uh, that, to me, is a, a critical problem. Um, uh, probably the, uh, the artificial intelligence is not equipped to, uh, uh, to deal with minus numbers. I think their algebra, el their algebra needs to be updated. But yeah. essentially, we had a difference of about 11%, and the statistical criteria for you know, things being different or not was mm. a minimum of 7.2%. So if, if it was if it was 4%, zero, um, they would not be different. If it was greater than 7.2, which 11 is, uh, yeah. that would be. So yes. we, we've established non-inferiority experimentally. Uh, we just have not established it uh through artificial intelligence. Sure, yeah. And of course, the whole point of the study was to establish non-inferiority. The, the, the authors came in with the idea that minimal access surgery is as good as or better than open laparotomy. That's, that's the whole point of the study. And it isn't. And that's the whole point of that. That's the answer to the study. Let's do more work. That's fine. It's going to be a very difficult study to... to uh, to to engender, I think, to to start because of these, but it's got to be done. Otherwise, people, well, looking at these data, people are going to suffer from um, surgery that is is inferior. Exactly, and Copilot didn't do much better faced with the same query. The real problem is is that bo both AIs thought that minus eleven was larger than minus seven point two. Yeah, Which is just yeah. the opposite of uh, really what minus eleven is. Yes. So, so there you. <laughs> oh dear, but it's you know, I I don't know how many patients are going to to listen to that 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 you've just uh, and perhaps some clinicians would say, oh, oh, is it is 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 it really like that? But it, as I said right at the beginning, if if clinicians, surgeons throughout the world do not take these data into consideration when they are talking to their patients, I think they will be in trouble. Someone is going to catch up with them. And it's usually lawyers and they know a hell of a lot. They've got the data.
Exactly. Well, Frank, we've done it again. We've completed <laughs> another guy down garage. Yeah, I look good forward one. to doing this again with you, man. Okay. Okay, signing off.